I was looking for an extremely small controller, something that I could fit in my bag or my pocket without any worries. Something that I could easily misplace and not have to worry about the cost replacing it with another one. This of course didn't need a joystick and all I really wanted it for was just some old retro games. I took to Amazon to see what I could find and I came across this Manba mini controller. It had everything I needed, the build quality looks really good on it, and it was small enough to fit in my pocket. With a next day delivery and a really good price, I couldn't resist trying it. The controller has every mode that you'll need, including Switch gameplay and X input for Windows. It had everything that I wanted in a controller, and it seemed to have a really good battery life of up to 8 hours. Overall, I'm really impressed with what I'm seeing so far, so let's order it and take a closer look to see if it was worth the price. This Manba controller, the best microcontroller that you've probably never heard of? Let's take a closer look and find out. Thanks to the miracle of Prime shipping, I already got the controller exactly when I was supposed to. Let's open the box and take a closer look at the controller itself. The box is pretty plain here, there's nothing to see, and the branding just says mini game controller. It doesn't even say the brand at all. On the back, it doesn't really tell me much except the maybe the SKU and what it is. The box arrived in good shape, of course. There's a little bit of gunk here, I'm not sure what that is, but the controller box looks fine, and I don't think it's going to be damaged at all. Alright, let's take a closer look and open it up. The unboxing here is pretty unremarkable, but let's take a closer look at the controller. It's so tiny. Wow, it's so small. And there it is. In the box, we have the controller and the wrist strap. We also have our instruction manual that shows us how to connect to our various devices. And we get a short Type-C USB cable. Looks like the start button turns on the controller, but we also want to connect it to our Android device. So let's see how we do that. For Android, it looks like we have to hold down the B button and the start button. Then press the select button for two seconds to enter the pairing mode. Before we pair it to any devices, let's take a closer look at the controller. The buttons are really glossy and it's pretty small. There's not a lot of travel on these buttons, but they do have a nice satisfying click to them. On the top, we have a USB-C port and two bumpers. This will be nice for fast forwarding and rewinding or save states in emulators. I originally thought the back here was made out of metal, but it is indeed plastic, and mine already has a couple scratches on it. All I did was set it down here too, so that's kind of a shame to see. Although for the price, it's not too bad. The start and select buttons do have a subtle click to them, but they're so small, it's really, really quiet. I got my Retroid Pocket 3 Plus here, so let's try pairing it and seeing how it goes. Gotta hold the Start and B button to turn it on, then hold down the Select button for a few seconds. You can see there's a couple lights here blinking on the top, so let's try connecting it. Came up as a generic gamepad, but it doesn't even work so far in Android here. It's on though, so let's try a couple games and see if it works. I can't get any of the controllers to map here for some reason, I'm not sure why and it's still not registering in RetroArch. Unfortunately, in the gamepad tester here, the, I can't even get anything to show. Like, it says it's connected, but for some reason, it's not working. I did try connecting it to my tablet here, my Xiaomi Mi Pad 5 Pro, and as you can see, yeah, it works. All the buttons work, so I guess it's just a Retroid compatibility issue. At least this works though, that means I can use it with other Android devices. I tried connecting it to a Windows device here, so I connected it to my Air Plus and it came up as an Xbox wireless controller. This is pretty cool, but I'm just trying to on Windows here and it's so cool to just have such a little controller you can play with. The X and Y on Windows seems to be reversed, so this is coming up as Y, this is X, this is A, and this is B. It does have the Xbox style layout, but it works. And I mean, it's it's pretty fun. I'm kind of impressed for uh, for how much I paid for it. This is pretty impressive. As far as the D-pad goes, it's definitely not the best. It kind of gets stuck as you rotate it. But I think for simple games like this, if you're only going in one direction or just rotating it from two different directions here, it shouldn't be too bad. There's barely any input latency as well. This is almost instant. Yeah, it's not bad. I'm impressed, at least for Windows. If you're using it on a retro device, you might have some issues, but this is not too bad. Yeah, I like it. Testing it on Switch here as well. Switch works pretty good. 
There's almost no input latency either, so I can see this being a decent little controller for games on here. I'll just test it here on a little mini game. Yeah, it's pretty impressive. I actually kind of like it. It's way better than I thought it was going to be, especially for how much it was. If you're looking for a decent little controller, this one's probably my go-to recommendation. I really like this. It is really light though, that's the thing too, so it's not going to feel like a premium controller. But for how much you're paying for it, it's not too bad. I can recommend that. Just to put into perspective how light this controller is, I can't really notice a weight difference between the controller and a USB cable. It's extremely light. This is slightly heavier maybe, but just without looking at the weight specifically, it's pretty light. I've had some trouble with ergonomics before on something like the Mio Mini, but for something this small, it's not too bad. The nice thing is, is this is so pocketable, you can just take it with you anywhere. So if you're looking for like a small little controller and you just want to stick it in your pocket, maybe do some emulation on your phone or something, this is a good little controller for that. The switch tells me that it's about half charged though, so I definitely need to charge it if I want to take it with me anywhere. So what do you guys think? Is this controller too small or does it kind of fit what you've been looking for? It easily fits in the palm of your hand and with some wide compatibility, this might not be a bad option. I wasn't a fan of the 8-bit dough mini controllers, so this one kind of fit the bill for me at least. Anyways, it was kind of fun to take a look at it. Small controller, not too bad for the price. Don't expect a top of the line controller obviously, and the buttons are just so-so. For how much you're paying, this is probably a pretty good option. What do you guys think? Have you picked up one of these before? Let me know in the comments below. If you have any questions, make sure to let me know, and as always, thanks for watching.